Welcome back to the tutorial series about the Travel Time Platform plugin for QGIS. This is the second episode of the series, and today we'll cover the simplified algorithms as well as the advanced algorithms from the Processing Toolbox. Make sure you watch the first tutorial before doing this one, as we'll need some of the skills that we learned in the first one. We'll mostly focus on the time map algorithm, but everything that's applicable to this one would be applicable in similar ways to the other two algorithms. And you may also learn a few nice things about QGIS features. So let's open QGIS again. And in today's episode, we're going to pretend that the pizza business that we started in the first tutorial has grown quite a lot and we now own several pizzerias in the neighbourhood. This would justify moving from the map tool that we used in the first tutorial to the actual algorithms. So let's start by creating a new project, adding a background layer, you know all this already. So I just add the layer, close this, and zoom with the scroll wheel to London. We're going to load some data, just like we did last time, using the quick OSM and plugin. So this time I'll look for the restaurant, which is under amenity and restaurant. Just like last time, I'll limit the search to the canvas extent. And on the advanced tab, I'm just interested in the points. Then I run the query. Again, it might take a bit of time depending on the connection and the size of the data set that you're trying to download. And once you're done, you can close the window. So, these are all the restaurants that I got from OSM. But of course, we're only talking about pizzerias, so we want to filter the data set to show only the pizzerias. So to do that, you can right-click on the layer, choose the filter section, and this dialog allows you to enter an expression here that would filter all the points that you have. So, what you may already know is that with the OSM data, you don't only have the geometries, you also have a lot of attributes that are willing to do the geometries. Here, you will see all the attributes that exist. There's one that's called cuisine here, and that represents all the types of cuisine that the restaurant serves. You can see a sample of the data here, and you can see, for instance, you can spot pizza here. So to filter the layer, we'll just double click on cuisine, which will help us build the filter. And we say we want the cuisine to be equal to pizza. You can test it here and see, okay, there's 79 rows that correspond to the filter. Just click okay and okay, and that's it. Before we start, just a small warning. At some point, you'll probably get issues because of the API quota. When you run a query, you may at some point see a red message popping up, saying that you've exceeded your request limit. If that happens, don't worry. Just wait a minute or so, and then you'll be able to run your query again. Also, make sure you don't use too many points when you do your queries, as a default for the free API is that you only have 10 requests per minute. So, the first analysis we're going to do is to try to represent the area that we are able to cover from all our restaurants in terms of delivery. You could use the same tool that we used last time and click on all of those points, but of course that would be a bit tedious. So instead, we'll use the algorithms from the toolbox. We're going to use the simple one to get started. So first, we're just going to select a few of those points that would represent the pizzerias that you actually own. So select the layer here in the legend. Use the Select Features tool here. You can grab a rectangle to select to say those are the pizzerias we own. Maybe another one here, if you hold the shift key, you can add a few elements to the selection. Once you have your selection, go to Toolbox, double click on the time map simple algorithm. 
This will open a dialog which has parameters that should actually remind you of the one we already searched for. So the first one represents the layer that you want to use as inputs, which is amenity restaurant. And we'll make sure to check the selected features only checkbox here so that the algorithm runs only on the ones we just selected before. Then for the other parameters, you should be familiar with those by now. We'll choose the departure time and we'll do the search with cycling. We'll leave those as they are for now and click run. OK, once the algorithm is done, you can close it and you can see all the search results done at once and aggregated here in one output layer. This result is nice, but it's a bit hard to read as what we actually wanted to map is the area that we are able to cover. So to deal with this, we're going to use some of the other QGIS algorithms to clean this up. So select the layer again, and here in the processing toolbox, we're going to look for another algorithm that's not linked to the travel time platform, which is called Dissolve. This one. So double click on it and make sure you choose the output layer as an input layer parameter and click run when you're ready. Then close and we'll see this it's the dissolve layer that represents the area that we're able to cover from our restaurant. We're just going to right click here and choose styles, copy style, all style categories. And then right click on this one, styles, paste style, all style categories. And then hide this other layer. So we now have a result that looks much cleaner and that represents the area that we can cover from our pizzerias. This is something that you will do a lot in QGIS or in algorithms, using the outputs of algorithms as inputs to other algorithms. And as you can see from the processing toolbox here, there are really a lot of different algorithms you can choose from to run your different analysis. Next, we're going to do another analysis. This time, we want to map the areas from where our customers are able to come to our restaurant. The only issue will be that we're dealing with two types of restaurants. We have a drive through that only serves customers that come by car, and we have a regular restaurant but which lacks a parking spot so that people can only come by public transportation. So, the first thing we need to enter is the data to define which restaurants are drive through and which are the regular ones. And just to make things a bit simpler, we'll keep these selected points here. So just make sure you've selected the amenity restaurant layer here. And in the edit menu, you can copy the features. And in the same menu, you can paste the features as a temporary scratch layer. We'll call this my restaurants and we'll hide the other one. Before we can run the algorithm, we need to prepare the data to indicate which of the points are drive through and which of the points are regular restaurants. To do so, make sure you select the restaurant layer here and open the attribute table. This attribute table shows all the data that is linked to the point geometries here. So what we'll want to do is to add a new column here, which would indicate the type of restaurant. So let's click on the toggle editing mode button here, which allows you to make new modifications and click here on new field. We're going to call this field is drive through and we'll choose Boolean as a type. And this adds a new field to the very right of the tables. So just scroll to the very right. And now we'll just pick at random a few of these and define these as being drive through restaurant. And toggle editing mode off, click save. And then you can close the window. We're now ready to run the algorithm. So click on the processing toolbox shortcut here and pick under advanced 
the time map algorithm. So double click on this and this is the advanced algorithm dialog. You'll see a few more inputs, especially under the advanced parameters section, where you can really fine tune how the travel times are calculated. Just like for the simple algorithm, we'll choose the My Restaurants layer as the search input. And then the field that we'll focus on is this one, because we don't want this to be public transportation for all of the points, but we want this to be driving for some of the points and public transport for some of the other points. I click on this small E here, which allows you to edit an expression using the QGIS expression editor. The expression editor is very powerful. It allows you to do all types of transformation to the data using all the attributes we saw before. Of course, it's a bit complicated to use, but it's worth learning a bit of it if you plan to use QGIS quite a lot. Today, I won't show you any detail. I'll just show you what to type here. So we type if, open parenthesis, double quote, is, drive, through. This refers to a field that we just created, and then comma, and then single quote, because this is a string and not a field driving and comma, single quote, public transport and close parenthesis. What this expression does is that it will check this attribute and if it is true will return driving and if it is false it will return public transport. Once you're done, just check the output preview, make sure there is no error, and click OK. And once you're ready, you can hit Run. Close the window, just hide the results we've had before, and this will be the output. Just like before, we'll do the Dissolve step. so that we get just one nice polygon. So, using expression is actually very powerful because it really allows you to do all types of complicated analysis. You could, for instance, do searches based on each restaurant's opening hours, or you could find some parameters such as parking time depending on each restaurant's local situation, and so on. This concludes our second tutorial. I really invite you to continue to watch to the next one, because in the next one, we'll look at how we can go even further and automate some of the steps that we've already done today. For instance, that last dissolve step, which we had to do manually, we can automate easily using QGIS features. Thanks for watching.